Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another macro struggle. Today we are going to start talking about the Arrow de Brew equilibrium and the Arrow de Brew economic model using a very simple version of an Arrow de Brew model. What we are going to talk about today is the setup of that model. So we're going to talk about the two people in that model named Bill and Dave. We'll talk about their utility functions. We'll talk a little bit about how the world works under an Arrow de Brew model. We'll use the way the world works to talk about Bill and Dave's lifetime budget constraint. Then we will formally define an Arrow de Brew equilibrium, and that's where we'll stop. We will solve this model in future videos, but today we are just setting up this model. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. We're going to start by talking about Bill and Dave. These are the two people who live in our simple Arrow de Brew model. How long do these people live? They live forever, so their lifetime is infinity. That is one thing that's going to make this model more difficult than maybe models you've seen before. What do Bill and Dave know? Well, let's think about it from Bill's perspective. Bill knows Bill's own actions, his plans, everything that he thinks, but he also knows everything about Dave. So he knows what Dave's actions are. He knows what Dave's plans are. He even knows what Dave wants to do. Now, what are Bill and Dave trying to maximize? What is their objective function? Well, they want to maximize utility, but not just today's utility. They want to maximize their lifetime utility. And their lifetime utility is the sum of each period's utility. So we can write that as an infinite sum where Bill and Dave each choose their consumption every time period from T equals zero to infinity. It's going to be the sum of beta to the T times their period utility function. This beta right here is just a time discount factor, which means that utility tomorrow is just not quite as good as utility today which is something we've seen over and over in economic models. So this is just the time discount factor where it's somewhere between zero and one. Closer to one means that we don't discount the future as much. Closer to zero means we discount more. We are going to get back to the budget, but first let's talk about how this Arrow de Brew world works because I think it'll make the budget constraint make more sense. How does the Arrow de Brew world work? What is the technology in this model? Well, there are endowments in this economy. What are endowments? It just means that every day Bill and Dave, it just means that every day Bill and Dave wake up and they open their door and they see a box of coconuts outside on their porch. And that is what they have to either eat or trade with. Now, the box does not have to contain the same number of coconuts every day, and it doesn't have to be equal between Bill and Dave. And in fact, our simple model of an error degree equilibrium is going to have both of those aspects where they're not equal and they're not the same every day. Another way to think about endowments is since we're talking about coconuts, you can think about it as if Bill and Dave each had a coconut tree outside and every period the coconut tree dropped a certain number of coconuts on the ground and Bill and Dave both perfectly know how many coconuts their own tree will drop and how many coconuts each other's tree will drop on any given day. The way we are going to define endowments is we are going to give Bill two coconuts if the period is odd and zero coconuts if the period is even and Dave is going to be the opposite. So there's always two coconuts being dropped every day, but they alternate between being given to Bill and being given to Dave. Now, trading in this economy all has to happen before time starts. So coconuts go bad overnight, which means that Bill and Dave can't take one of their coconuts and put it under their bed. If they do that, it's going to go bad and they can't eat it tomorrow. So what are we trading exactly if coconuts go bad? Well, we are trading IOUs or promises to pay. So if Bill wants Dave to give him a coconut in period 100, he would pay Bill some coconuts today in order to have Dave pay Bill back in period 100. So we're trading promises to pay a certain number of coconuts in the future. So you can think of it as if before time starts, we have this market. Each market is a time period. So this is the market for period one, this is the market for three, five, seven, all the way to infinity. And each stall for each time period has a price. So P1, P3, P5, P7, and here's all the even periods. And just to make our lives easier, we're going to say that the price of a coconut at time zero is equal to one, so that we can think about the prices relative to the price of a coconut at time zero. Now that we know this information and how this trade works, Let's go back to the budget constraint and fill that in. So the budget, what do we have to spend? Well, we have the 
total present value of our lifetime endowment because we are trading before time starts. So I have the entire value of my lifetime endowment available to me to spend and trade. What is the value of my endowment? Well, generally when we do budgets, it's price times quantity or price times endowment. Same thing here. This is going to be PT times ETI. Okay, that has to be greater than or equal to what I spend. What am I spending? Well, again, it's an infinite sum. It's going to be price times quantity, but now it is the same price times how many coconuts I actually eat in that period. So this is my overall budget constraint. And now we have all the pieces we need to put this together and form a Aero-Debreu equilibrium formally. So let's go ahead and do that now. What is an Aero-Debreu competitive equilibrium? An Aero-Debreu competitive equilibrium is an allocation. It's an allocation of the consumption for Bill and Dave for every period from T equals zero to infinity. Given prices, again, every price from T equals zero to infinity, a price for every stall in the Aero de Brew market. So it's kind of solved the household problem for both Bill and Dave. The household problem is the utility maximization subject to their budget constraint. And it also has to satisfy market clearing from that definition of competitive equilibrium. What is market clearing here? Market clearing means that every coconut that drops on the ground in one period has to be eaten. So whatever Bill eats today and Dave eats today has to be equal to the two coconuts that arrived today because again, you can't store them. So two coconuts total fall on the ground in this economy and two coconuts are eaten in this economy every day. So this is the setup for the Aero de Brew equilibrium. What we're going to do next is we are going to start solving the Aero de Brew equilibrium. Again, it's gonna be in two parts. So hopefully this makes the setup make a little more sense and you feel ready to get into the solution. If so, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggle.